स्टडी आई क्यू आई एस अब तैयारी हुई अफोर्डेबल हेलो नमस्कार 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 वेलकम टू माई क्लास द डेली करेंट अफेयर वे वी विल लर्न नॉट ओनली दिग्निफिकेंट इवेंट्स ऑफ द पास ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स फ्रॉम परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ नॉलेज एनहांसमेंट एंड कंसेप्चुअल क्लैरिटी बट ऑल्सो डिवलपिंग अ नैक फॉर सॉल्विंग फिल्म क्वेश्चन फिल्म इज बिकमिंग द बिगेस्ट हर्डल मैनी ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स who write answers when i give them questions i can see that they are doing better when it comes to answer writing but maybe in prelims they are lagging behind so to overcome this i have started this initiative i have already completed a lot of current affairs for the month of june and july i have also planned to provide you the folder of the compilation of july to my telegram channel on my telegram channel i provide daily pdfs as and when needed i also provide compilation So, if you're new to this channel, please do subscribe to my Telegram channel. Other than that, I also conduct answer writing sessions and other important things that are needed for answer writing in the form of assignments. Also, if you have any questions regarding this examination, you can talk to me directly on my Instagram channel. Now, these are the various events that we have to cover today. First, let's start with this question. Consider the following statements: India's refining capacity is higher than its domestic demand. From April 2022 to January 2023 the Netherlands has become the highest petroleum product importing country from India. Russia and Saudi Arabia are the top two countries from where India imported the highest amount of crude oil in June 2023. Every month it can change that is why I specified a month as well. So how many of the statements given above is or are correct? See recently India is getting a lot of profit from sending or exporting crude oil to different countries why? Because of Russia's absence in the global oil supply as in global oil supply has been dominated mostly by countries such as Russia and because of Russian invasion of Ukraine European countries and many other countries are now getting their oil supply from a back end channel and the back end channel is now dominated by countries such as India we will discuss that in detail but india's refining capacity is actually higher than our domestic demand supposedly we are refining for people about 110 people but we only have 80 people in india then what we will do we will dis- uh, we will export the surplus amount of refined oil that we have okay so india's refining capacity is yes it is higher than the domestic demand so first statement is definitely correct did you know that from january 2022 sorry from april 2022 to january 2023 the netherlands has imported the highest number or highest amount of petroleum products from our country this is 186% higher in the last 5 years if we compare so second statement is also correct in june 2023 russia iraq and saudi arabia have been the top 3 crude oil exporter countries to india and not after russia we have iraq and not saudi arabia so first statement is correct second statement is also correct but third is not so how many are correct two only are correct now before i move on further i would like to tell you advise you as your teacher please take care of yourself pink eye or conjunctivitis is exploding in india wherever you are use sanitizers if you go to some places public places carry a sanitizer with yourself because it's a really bad infection and i don't want you to lose when it comes to studies i'm already under the weather i have cold and cough so please take care of yourself all right so now what happens first is correct second is correct third is not correct two only will be the correct answer now why have i asked you this question because mangalore refinery and petrochemical limited has become india's largest psu refinery for the year 2022 23 one thing we have to keep in mind this is given on the basis that mangalore refinery petrochemical limited is the largest psu when it comes to one single place others can be larger but the refineries are located in a scattered place at a scattered amount of places so what happens here it is for this very reason that mangalore's refinery has become the largest psu one single largest place one single largest place all right and 17.14 million tons of crude oil in the last financial year has been refined by it which is the highest ever throughput in the indian industry uh, in the indian petroleum industry 10% of the total crude oil was refined by it 
Now, Indian Oil Group, we have 23 refineries all over India. Indian Oil Group has 11 out of 23. And as you can see, this map I have attached for you to understand it better. We have, we have refineries in Northeast India, uh, in Central India as well, Western India, and you can see Southern India. But we are planning more refineries. As of yet, we have 23 Samar under construction. Oldest one is at Big Boy. Big Boy is there in India since 1901 in Assam. All right, moving on. Now, I was talking about the global oil supply chain, right? That how European countries are getting help from India. See, morally, European countries do not want to buy from Russia. That has helped in balancing the global oil supply. How? European countries saying, okay, Russia, due to ethical reasons, we do not want to buy oil from you. But India says, we do not have any ethical reasons to not buy oil from Russia. So India buys oil from Russia. Okay. And India refines this crude oil and then exports it to countries such as America, European countries. Two things are achieved from here. First, the global oil supply is intact. Second, India is getting a lot of profit. And third, these countries to which India is exporting this refined oil and petroleum product, they are also not lagging behind. But at the expense of whom? Russia. Russia could have gotten a lot of profit. But Russia, because many countries will not buy oil from Russia, it has to give it to other countries who are refining it and sending it to other nations. So this is how the ground reality works. In the last five years, public sector units in India, they are going forward with exporting refined oil and petroleum products and it has almost doubled uh, except for Nepal and Bhutan. And petroleum products were the most exported commodities from India. The Netherlands, China, Singapore, UK, UAE, Saudi Arabia, Brazil, Indonesia, Turkey and South Africa in the fiscal year 23 has been the largest export destination. The Netherlands has imported this million worth of petroleum products and this is a 186% increase since the last five years. As I told you that Russia's loss is everybody else's profit and that is what is happening. Now, fuel oil imports from Russia have risen for India and India is competing with Africa, Middle East, South America when it comes to sending off the refined oil and other petroleum products. Moving on, in the last month, that is June, 2023, we exported the highest amount of crude oil from Russia, then Iraq, then Saudi Arabia, then USA and finally UAE. Next question, which country has become the 194th member of the UNESCO? Israel, Sudan, USA, Afghanistan. Recently, USA has joined UNESCO back as the 194th member. Palestine is not a sovereign state, but still it has been accepted as a member of the UNESCO, which wasn't sitting well with the USA. So it left the UNESCO years back. But now, in order to ensure that China doesn't fill that gap that has been left out by the USA in the policy making, that is why USA has returned. We will discuss that. So the correct answer is option C. The US First Lady Jill Biden attended the flag raising ceremony at the UNESCO. And as I told you, it all started back in 2011. When UNESCO said, Palestine, you can become our member. Israel and the USA, they were not happy with it because according to the USA, it is important to toe the line that the USA dictates. So UNESCO says that no worries. We are just admitting it as a member. But it is not a sovereign state. We are not saying that it has become a country. So it will attend the council meetings. It will attend the general assemblies of the UNESCO. But it will not have the voting rights here. So that was not very digestive for USA, the USA and Israel. So what did the USA do? USA in 2012 said, see, we are stopping our funding. I will not fund you anymore. The UNESCO was upset. Under the Trump administration in 2017, it was decided that we are not going to be a part of UNESCO anymore. So in 2019, USA, the USA said Tata and bye-bye to UNESCO. 
and recently it was thought that China is now filling the gap that the USA has left. So USA says I will come back and I will ensure that I will also stay in the policies such as artificial intelligence. Then it's not the first time that the USA has done this. In 1984 under the presidentship of Ronald Reagan, the UNESCO was charged or alleged of corruption and mismanagement. And in 1984 again that happened and the UNESCO or uh, the USA left UNESCO. But under George Bush in 2003, the USA joined the UNESCO back. So it's like a switch on and switch off relationship. Moving on, UNESCO was established in 1945. It currently has 195 member and 195 members and the last member according to the precedence or the preference is Palestine because Palestine is not a country. It is just a member in the eyes of the UNESCO. So that is why it is 195th and the USA is 194. And it has eight associate members, the general conferences that I just told you about the meetings that are happening in the UNESCO that are attended by Palestine without the right to vote. It is the general conferences and it's headquartered at Paris so that it can take into consideration the encouragement of culture of peace, eradication of poverty, sustainable development, intercultural dialogue through education, the sciences, culture, communication and information. It has two broad focus areas, gender equality and Africa. Remember that, all right, it could be asked in your examination. First is gender equality and second is Africa. So these two are the key focus areas for the UNESCO. India joined UNESCO in 1946 and for the first time ever, the UNESCO New Delhi office was opened as a decentralized office in 1948 for the encouragement of science and technology programs in countries such as Afghanistan, Bhutan, Bangladesh, India, Iran, Maldives, Mongolia, Myanmar, Nepal, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. Later on, it also said that New Delhi office should take into a consideration communication programs, education and culture. As it is decentralized, it is called a cluster office and the New Delhi office now also you know, works in coordination for Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Maldives, Nepal and Sri Lanka. All right. Consider the following statements. The Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi is a central sector scheme. The Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sam, uh, sorry, Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samruddhi Kendras come under the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare and the Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sichai Yojana is implemented by the Ministries of Agriculture, Water Resources and Rural Development. All right, so let us see what, how many of the statements given above is or are correct. Okay, so first statement, the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi, PM Kisan. It's a central sector scheme. That is definitely correct. It came into existence in the year 2018. Under this, a direct benefit transfer is given to the farmers, to the farmer families. And this DBT is of 6,000 rupees per annum. Per annum means per year. And this is given in three installments at every four month gap. So, 2000 after four months, again 2000. And after four months, again 2000. So, remember this. All right. And next is the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samriddhi Kendras. These are under the Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizer and not Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. So this is incorrect. Second is incorrect. Third, Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sichai Yojana. Yes, this was launched in 2015. And it wants to enhance the cultivable area by taking the help of proper irrigation facilities, more crop per drop, Har khet ko pani. Under it, there are many other schemes which have been amalgamated and it is taken care of by the Ministries of Agriculture, Water Resources as well as Rural Development. Ministry of Rural Development is concerned with water harvesting, creating ponds which comes under uh, those particular works which also come under Manrega is taken care of by the Ministry of Rural Development. So under that only a coordination occurs in that manner. And also one thing I missed is the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi is a central sector scheme.
that means the funding is 100% by the central government central sponsored scheme is when there is a share between share of funding between the center and the state or the center and the union territory first is correct second is correct third is uh, sorry first is correct second is not correct third is correct one and three right how many are correct two only will be the correct answer now if you like the way we teach be a part of the p2i batch for upsc 2024 if you want to become an officer we are going to provide you an arduous plan for it every mentor every teacher will be definitely in touch with you so that they can help you in the best possible way for you to achieve your dreams other than this the syllabus management is such from 22nd of july we have launched our batches we are closing soon on 31st of july so if you want to become an officer and take the advantage of this batch you will get prelims test series main test series daily answer writing practice other than this you will also get current affairs module and a mains residential program for those students who are going to qualify prelims 2024 you will be called to the study iq main campus so that you can prepare for your examination free of any cost hindi english and english three separate batches are there investment is just an amount of rupees 29999 only for all this if you provide a code pd life please use this code to ensure that you get a discount okay moving on prime minister narendra modi will dictate a huge amount of pradhan mantri kisan samriddhi kendras in rajasthan today he has dedicated it and the government has also released the 14th installment of the pm kisan to millions of small and marginal farmers on 27th july that is today so i already told you about the krishi sichai yojana in the year 2015 it was launched to expand cultivable or cultivated area with assured irrigation that means irrigation will be definitely given water wastage is also one of its areas as in it will curb the wastage of water improve water use efficiency that means more crop per drop and uh, creating protective irrigation by harnessing rainwater this is the work of ministry of rural development jal sachan and jal sachan micro uh, irrigation is also incentivized that means if this is the crop make sure that the water is used for this crop only and not it is spread across all the field it's not like that it shouldn't be happening so dripping facilities should be maintained in such a manner that every crop gets its own dedicated water supply pmksy has been conceived amalgamating certain ongoing schemes such as aibp ministry of water resources river development and ganga rejuvenation takes care of it integrated watershed management program department of land resources on farm water management of department of agriculture and cooperation and it is implemented by the ministry of agriculture water resources and rural development i have already told you about this just keep one thing in mind what is a family under this scheme husband wife and minor children moving on pm samriddhi kendras these will provide seed and fertilizers to farmers at a subsidized rate other than this soil testing is also allowed through this and under this under one particular brand that is by the name of bharat important fertilizers will be provided okay moving on now let's talk about international relations international relations today pertains to line of control because recently the defense minister has made a statement that during the kargil war we could have entered loc we can enter loc and if need be we will enter the loc and take the pok back which india is very capable of consider the following statements with respect to line of control it was established by the shimla agreement it is a legally recognized boundary it is a formal ceasefire line so what do we have to see how many of the statements given above is or are correct see one thing we have to keep in mind over here is that loc is not a legally recognized boundary it was a temporary arrangement first thing is very clear and the loc has come into existence by certain agreements okay so we have to understand that it was earlier a former ceasefire line it is still a former a formal ceasefire line that is abided by both india and the uh, pakistan both india and pakistan and these two countries also maintain a buffer area of no man's land other than this it was established by the simla agreement of 1972 after the war 1971 indo pak war okay so first is correct second is incorrect and third is correct one and three two are correct two only will be the correct answer i have already introduced you with the news so as you can see 
here is the map that is going to show us when instrument of accession was signed between india and kashmir the maharaja of kashmir it was agreed upon that india will provide defense assistance to kashmir although other important state based relationship or we can say federal subjects will be taken care of by the maharaja hari singh but that instrument of accession was disregarded by the pashtun tribes of pakistan through these tribes the pakistan was able to intrude into kashmir so the war started between india and pakistan and with the help of the karachi agreement of 1949 we could establish a cease fire line okay and this cease fire line as you can see here nj nj982 is our base in shyachin as well so if it is asked in your prelims examination about this base nj9842 this is our shyachin base and as the time went by some things happened some fights some minor infiltrations happened the kargil war happened and that changed the scenario during the war after the war i must say of 1971 with the help of shimla agreement it was agreed upon that the current loc comes into existence so this is the loc the gilgit baltistan range azad kashmir are to the west of loc and here we have our union territory of jammu and kashmir okay and as i have already told it yesterday only that pakistan also ceded an area of our own territory to china this is the shaksgam tract we moving on now consider the following pairs name of tribal products or practices and what is their category actually we have to match them first is gunjla gondi this is a script dokra metal art halma dance form so what do we have to see how many statements how many pairs beg your pardon given above is or are correct gunjla gondi is the gondi languages script that means in the written form this language how it is written is the script and this makes the first pair to be definitely correct then we have dokra dokra is a metal art which is developed with the help of the lost wax technique the lost wax technique where does it origin come from its origin comes from harappan civilization bronze girl statue do you remember so first pair is correct sorry let me see yes it is correct dokra metal craft is correct but halma is not correct halma is actually a water conservation practice by the people of jammu and madhya pradesh by the tribes of jammu and madhya pradesh so first is correct second is correct third is not correct so two only will be the correct answer recently a new gallery was inaugurated on the occasion of one year completion by the president draupadi murmu she is a tribe she is a tribal woman and it is such an honor for the entire tribe that she is our president it's our honor too and the new gallery janjatya darpan or the tribal mirror it has been inaugurated at the rashtrapati bhavan it is of 2200 square feet and it has been inaugurated with the help of indira gandhi national center for arts which is an autonomous institution under the ministry of culture traditional natural resource management practices like halma dokra tribal art musical instruments and various scripts like gunjla gondi these all are exhibited there varli gondi and mud art is also over there and another artificial intelligence initiative by the na name of navchar which is an artificial intelligence enabled gallery has also been inaugurated it is developed by the rashtrapati bhavan remember because prelims can ask you this question who has developed it it's the rashtrapati bhavan in collaboration with whom with the intel india and sutrakala darpan all right so these kind of questions could come and you must be thinking i haven't read it anywhere in any book where is it written this is all written in the current affair section do not worry about reading newspapers on a daily basis as in just read the editorials because i am always in favor of reading the editorials for myriad reasons one of the biggest reason is you will definitely see an improvement in your reading speed okay so do that and opinion making now the gunjla gondi lipi or the script it belongs to the uh, you know gondi language which is a dravidian language of the gond people who are spread across northern telangana eastern maharashtra southeastern madhya pradesh and chatisgarh as well and it actually belongs to gondi village i am talking about oh, sorry gunjla village not gondi village gunjla 
I don't know if you, some of you must, some of the students belong to uh, Tilangana as well. So if you can understand this, here in Adilabad only, we have the Gunjila village from where multiple scripts were recorded. Okay. Now Halma, Halma is actually a water conservation practice which is actually developed with the help of Bheel tribe. Bheel tribe practices it in the Jhabua region. Okay. And it is the conservation of water. This is how the reservoirs are built. Okay. Next, Dokra art is from Bastar, Chhattisgarh. And it is a state of East Central India. We are talking about Chhattisgarh only. Dokra is actually a non-ferrous material. And it is developed with the help of lost wax technique. This is a wax mould. A wax object. I will paint a clay mould beside it. When that clay will be dried, then it will be heated. The wax model will melt and melt away. What will happen? There will be a hollow clay mould in which I will pour the metal and the clay is then removed. And finally, we have our finished product. Okay. Again, I am repeating. We have a wax model around which I will paint a clay mould. After a point of time, when it is dry, I will heat the clay mould from which the wax will melt away. I will also provide a place from which the wax can be removed. And then in that hollow mould, I will pour the metal and after a period of time, we have a finished product when I will remove that clay. So this is the Sair Pradyu or the lost wax technique. It is very detailed in nature. Okay, moving on, we have seen Mohan Jodhra girl also. It's through the same process of Harappan civilization. Practice since a very long period of time. Article 105 and Article 194 are related to Ordinance making role of the Governor and the President, Parliamentary privileges, No confidence motion and the power of issuing whip. So, the correct answer will be what? It will be Parliamentary privileges because recently Malika Arjun Kharge, the leader of the opposition, has said that it was very insulting while I was speaking and the mic was switched off. It's the parliamentary privilege of each member of the parliament and the state legislature to have a right to speak. And this is provided, provided in our articles 105 and 194, 194 for the state legislatures and 105 for the parliament, the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. It provides freedom of speech and publication under the under the parliamentary authority. It is defined under article 105 clause 1 and clause 2. A person who is a parliamentarian has a right to speak and they cannot be tried for anything they have said in the parliament by any court in the country. Whatever matter has to be settled, it has to be settled by the parliament itself. This is parliamentary privilege. Alright, moving on. Consider the following states, Odisha, Gujarat, Andaman and Nicobar. Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal. So what do we have to see? We have to arrange the above mentioned states in the correct order. Alright. So correct order in ascending order. It was written yes. Ascending order means lowest to highest. Do not get confused in your examination. Your prelims can trick you. You might be thinking I have to written from the highest to lowest as always. But now they can also ask you from lowest to highest. Mix things up. Now let's move on to the next question. Consider the following states. Odisha, Gujarat, and Mananikubar, Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal. So what do we have to see? We have to arrange the above given states of India in the correct order when it comes to mangrove coverage from lowest to highest because it is here written ascending order. Many of you may get confused when it comes to parts like this. Descending means highest to lowest, ascending means lowest to highest. So don't get nervous in this examination and think that I am going to write highest to lowest. So from lowest to highest if we go, we have to first put Odisha, then we have to put Andhra Pradesh, then Anman and Nicobar, Anman and Nicobar, then Gujarat, and finally West Bengal. 14325 will be the correct answer. 14325, option B will be the correct answer. Recently, a village in Kendra Para, coastal area of Odisha, has decided to donate land for plantation of mangroves. Mangroves take care when it comes to cyclones and also. They take care of the ecosystem. And Kendra Para has 
the reputation of having 80% of the mangroves of Odisha. And in the Forest Survey of India, it was written that Odisha has achieved the highest growth of mangrove coverage of 8 square kilometer. Okay, and that is why this is really a nice gesture by the people of villages of Tindrapara. Alright, so let us see what is mangrove, what are mangroves. These are swamps and coastal wetlands and they are actually tropical and subtropical area trees. They belong to the family of Rhizophoraceae, Acanthaceae, Lythraceae, Combretaceae and Arasaceae. And they are halophytic trees. That means they love salt water. Shrubs and other plants, they grow in brackish to saline tidal waters. They are found in estuaries. Estuaries are where? Where fresh water is meeting salt water. And West Bengal stands at the top. Then we have Gujarat. Then we have Andaman and Nicobar, Andhra Pradesh. And finally, we have Maharashtra and Odisha. Alright. Now, this is a practice question for you to solve and answer it correctly in the comment segment. Okay. Consider the following countries. Brazil, Germany, Japan. How many of the above economies based on their GDP are predicted to be in the top 5 in the year 2027? Answer it correctly and I will put your names on the leaderboard in the upcoming next class. Thank you. Study IQ IS. Ab hui affordable.